In this video, we're going to look at one of the biggest mistakes that people make as it relates to their credit as they're trying to build their wealth or achieve financial freedom. If you don't want to fall into this trap, this is the video for you. Make sure that you watch until the end. So my name is Nico and I've been a financial planner for about eight years now. I've learned a lot about finances, especially how to use or leverage your finances so that you can achieve financial freedom. I teach you to deploy, not just employ your money so that you can achieve your goals and live the life of your dreams and achieve financial freedom. So if personal finance is a topic you like to hear about a lot, please don't forget to give this video a like, subscribe, Hit the notification bell so that you can be notified every time a new video comes out. Hello and welcome to the sixth installment of my Achieve True Financial Freedom series. If you're tuning into the channel for the first time or if you're tuning into the series for the first time, Please be aware that the first part of the series was called What Financial Freedom Is Not. The second part was called Financial Freedom and Your Time. Third installment was called Financial Freedom and Your Money. The fourth installment was called Financial Freedom and How It Relates to Opportunity. The fifth installment was called Why Your Financial Advisor Cannot Help You Achieve Financial Freedom. This episode is called the importance of credit in your journey to financial freedom. So, let's get into it. As most of you know, I've been a financial planner for the better part of about eight years now, specializing in servicing finance professionals, and the most bizarre pattern or observation has become manifestly clear to me over the past couple of years. But before we get into that, let me give you an idea of the type of clients that I work with on a day-to-day -day basis that made me come to this realization. So, I work with management accountants, CPAs, also known as Certified Public Accountants, aka Chartered Accountants. I work with financial managers, financial directors, even CFOs, investment bankers, and all other types of finance professionals. Looking at the titles of these professionals, it is plain to see that these are individuals who have a good idea of how businesses use their capital and their access to credit. After all, these individuals work in banking, venture capital, mergers and acquisitions, leverage buyouts, and if not, they definitely are at the helm of the finances of the operations or the institutions that they work within. This may seem simple or straightforward and maybe even obvious, but an alarming pattern has become apparent to me over the years, and I want to share this with you so that you don't make the mistake that even these finance professionals are making with their personal finances. So how do businesses use credit? Businesses have access to credit and they need it. Very few large businesses that exist today would either not exist or would certainly not be as large as they are today were it not for credit. This being said, any large business will most likely never take out a loan so that they can meet payroll. Very few banks would even give them a loan if they knew that the business was taking out the loan to pay salaries. Furthermore, businesses will typically not take on debt to fund things such as conferences, team building exercises or events, or similar expenditure. Businesses will, however, use their access to credit to fund things such as research and development, product development, an expansion plan into a new product or service lineup, or entering a new territory, the construction of a new plant or a new warehouse, or even office space if they believe that the office space will lead to an increase of revenue. They could even take on debt if they believe that taking on this debt would be more tax efficient than funding the same endeavors using cash from the balance sheet. They can even use debt to decrease the time that it would take to achieve profitability. Credit, you will notice, they use either to make money or to scale or grow their business. Now, we can all attest to the fact that businesses are much more effective at making money that individual. To a person like me, this is a cause for further study, the type of thing I want to double click on. Said differently, if I want to learn about how to make a lot of money, 
I would rather learn from a business than an individual. What do people typically use their credit cards for? Car rentals, online purchases. When you don't have money to pay cash for something that you want now, those times when you have more money than money. And let's face it, emotional spends as well. What do people typically use loans for? Higher purchase agreements, home improvements, vehicle maintenance, furniture. And what do people typically use mortgages for? Of course, the house that they live in. Good credit usage. Every business that exists, agnostic of what industry it operates in, whether it be banking, insurance, commodities, media, exists for one thing and one thing alone, to make money. The individuals or the employees that work for these same businesses also typically do this for one reason and one reason alone, making money. <laughs> and this is where the bizarre contrast begins to emerge. Both of these are doing this for money, but they go about it in totally different ways. Did you notice the difference between how businesses use their money and their access to credit versus how individuals, even the same individuals that work in the finance department of the same businesses, use their money and access to credit? Individuals use their credit to access today things that they can only afford tomorrow. We can get into the debate about whether these are needs or wants. It doesn't really matter, but at the end of the day, the reality remains that you use access to credit so that you can get control of these things today. This, to me, is the textbook definition of debt. And then after having taken on this debt, you then have and pursue the ambitions of saving your way towards wealth. Did you notice that none of the examples that I made previously about how individuals make use of the access to credit actually makes them money? The cash that you have after having taken on this debt, you then use to finance the debt. Businesses, on the other hand, use the cash that they have to finance non-income generating expenditure and then use their access to credit to finance activities or endeavors that will make them money. This kind of use of credit is called leverage. Leverage is using something you do not own to create or build something that you one day will own. Credit and financial freedom. As discussed several times during the course of this series, you cannot save your way to wealth. To create wealth and achieve financial freedom, you need two main components. Firstly, savings. Secondly, scalability, which is often achieved through the use of leverage. So what you need to do is build up your savings so that you don't have to use your access to credit to take on debt. In this way, you free up your access to credit so that you can use it as leverage and not debt. So continue to save. Build up your emergency fund. After you've done that, save some more so that you can use your savings to make purchases that other people would take on credit cards or take on loans for. And after you've done this, then you can use the savings that you have as a down payment for your leverage arrangements. This article basically details 13 things that rich people will never spend their money on. Impulse buys, extreme inheritances, subscriptions to TV channels and video games, luxury brands, an overpriced home, buying instead of renting, pricey grooming, multiple credit cards, late fees, things that don't last as an inferior product, stuff over experiences, retirement and gambling. Through exercising these types of habits, the rich free up their access to credit so that they can approach the banks and make use of leverage to make them even more money. And after having made all this money, the banks just want to do it all over again because everybody is winning. This, my dear friend watching this video, is how to set up your finances so that you can achieve financial freedom. If you want more tips on how to go about achieving financial freedom, please do not forget to subscribe because that's all I talk about on this channel. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that you found it useful. If you did, please give this video a like. Don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell 
so that you can be notified every time a new video comes out. If you'd like to continue on this series, the last video in this series is the vocation change that you need to make if you want to achieve financial freedom. If you found this video useful, please let me know in the comments. If there's any other questions you have, please let me know in the comments. If there's anything else you want me to cover on this channel, please let me know in the comments. Have a lovely day. So I've been running my financial planning practice for about eight years now. So I've been thoroughly exposed to all the methods that work and all the methods that don't work. And as an extension of this YouTube channel, I've also now started to consult one-on-one, -on -one, helping you with wealth coaching. We talk everything from credit, how to speak to your banks, buying cars, property investment, everything you need to know so that you can achieve financial freedom successfully. If you want to get in touch and schedule a consultation, contact me via the email provided in the description.